The Battle of Pate was a decisive battle fought in medieval France just north of Orléans on June 18, 1429, during the Hundred Years' War between the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of France. The English victory at Agincourt 15 years earlier was an absolute disaster for France. In the aftermath of this defeat, England took control of Normandy and the Duchy of Burgundy took Paris. In 1419, a formal alliance was made between the English king, Henry V, and the Duke of Burgundy, Philip the Good. The English and Burgundian allies then forced the French king, Charles VI, also known as the Mad King, to sign the Treaty of Troyes in 1420. The terms of this treaty arranged for Henry to marry Charles's daughter, Catherine of Valois and Charles submitted that Henry and his descendants would inherit the throne of France, disinheriting the French Dauphin, Charles VII. In 1422, Henry V died, which meant that his infant son was now king. Months later, Charles VI also died, and as a result, Henry V's young son, who shared the same name, was to be crowned both Henry VI of England and Henry II of France. In theory, this should have ended the Hundred Years' War with an English victory. However, many French princes still refused to recognize the terms of the Treaty of Troyes, as many Frenchmen still remained loyal to the Dauphin. Therefore, the war continued. In 1423, an allied English and Burgundian army led by Thomas Montagu, the Earl of Salisbury, and Baron Robert Willoughby defeated a united French and Scottish army at the Battle of Cravant. Later that year, the English suffered a crushing defeat by the French at the Battle of La Brassiniere. Despite this, the English were able to overcome this setback and win another decisive victory at the Battle of Verneuil in 1424, with the latter battle often being described as a second Agincourt. The years immediately following these events witnessed the peak of English power in France. During this time, the English controlled virtually all of northern France, everything north of the Loire River, save for Orléans and Angers. The English continued their advance south into central France, and on October 17, 1428, the English besieged the city of Orléans. The city was exceptionally well defended, and the siege dragged on for several months. As the time passed, the English noose around Orléans began to tighten. One French excursion was launched to secure supplies outside of the city, known as the Battle of the Herrings due to the target being an English wagon convoy loaded with fish. This failed, however, resulting in a disastrous French defeat and a crash in French morale. Supplies were beginning to run low. The situation was beginning to look grim. Should Orleans fall to the English, it would have made the recovery of northern France all but impossible. When the French estates met at Chenon in September of 1428, they urged the Dauphin to make peace. Charles even considered abdicating and going into exile in Scotland. These were some of the darkest times in French history. The turning point came in 1429, when a 16-year-old peasant girl, Joan of Arc, approached the Dauphin. She told the Dauphin she had received visions from God to drive the English from their homeland, 
and that it was his destiny to become king of France. She convinced the Dauphin to send her to the siege. After joining with a relief convoy assembling at Blois, she met with the English siege commanders and famously exchanged words, calling herself the maiden and ordering them in the name of God to quote, be gone or I will make you go. Upon her arrival at Orleans, the morale of the French troops increased tremendously. She brought with her much needed supplies into the city. The people saw her arrival as a miracle, as divine intervention. The tide was now beginning to turn. The Dauphin simultaneously gathered reinforcements and the French forces rallied, assaulting the English fortifications surrounding the city. These assaults proved successful and the English were forced to break the siege and retreat. Emboldened by the Maiden, the French counterattacked, seizing several English strongholds on the Loire River. The French army, led by the Duke of Alençon, stormed the town of Jargeau on June 12th, then captured the bridge at Monsieur Loire and continued on, laying siege to Bugency on June 15th. Following the defeat at Orleans, an English army of reinforcements under the command of John Fastolf set off from Paris and joined forces with the survivors of the besieging army under Lord Talbot and Lord Scales at Monsieur Lure. Talbot recommended an immediate attack to relieve Bugency. However, Fastolf was more cautious and opposed this course of action, being reluctant to seek a pitched battle with the French, who were much more numerous. An army from Brittany also arrived under the banner of Arthur de Richemont. This further reinforced the French. Discouraged by the arrival of this new army and unaware of Fastolf's reinforcements, the English garrison at Bugency surrendered on June 18th. As a result, Lord Talbot finally agreed to Fastolf's proposal and the English army set out in flight, retreating towards Paris. Learning of this maneuver, the Duke of Alençon, unsure in this moment of what to do next, asked Joan for counsel. The maiden replied, Have you good spurs? Ha! cried they. Must we fly then? No, surely. But there will be need to ride boldly. We shall give a good account of the English, and our spurs will serve us famously in pursuing them. And so the French army set off in pursuit, chasing the English army with haste and sending scouts to learn the English location.
A mounted force of 1,500 knights and men at arms, led by La Hire and Jean de Jean Trails, led the French army's advance. Joan followed in the rear, staying with the main army, led by the Duke of Alençon. After becoming aware that the French forces were approaching, the English commander, Lord Talbot, the Earl of Shrewsbury, sent a force of archers to ambush them from a patch of woods along the road and redeployed his men, setting up 500 longbowmen in position to cover the rest of the retreating army and block the main road near the village of Pate. The English commander intended to deploy the same tactics used previously at the battles of Agincourt in 1415 and Crecy in 1346, deploying an army composed of mostly longbowmen behind a barrier of sharpened stakes driven into the ground to deter any cavalry attack. Talbot and Scales positioned their army on the main road near the intersection while Fastolf deployed his infantry along a ridge behind Talbot's forces. On the French side, the French scouts initially failed to locate the English army in its entirety. The French vanguard then paused at St. Sigmund, about four miles from Pate, and finally had success. A lone stag roaming along the road was flushed out by the French and ran north towards the English position. When the English spotted the stag, they raised a hunting cry. This gave away the position to the French. La Hire and Jean rushed forward to engage the enemy. The retreating English army stopped and began making preparations for the battle. At this point, the rear guard, led by Talbot, was still in the process of constructing their defensive fortifications of sharpened stakes. Appearing over a hill south of the English lines, Jean and La Hire caught sight of the English army. Remembering the advice of the maiden, they did not pause or even wait for the rest of the French army to catch up. Instead, they immediately deployed their cavalry and attacked, smashing into the English position.
Fastolf watched in horror from the ridge as Talbot's forces were annihilated by the full force of the French heavy cavalry charge. The English fortifications were unfinished and were ineffective in stopping the attack. The French knights were soon joined by the rest of the French vanguard, and Fastolf attempted to reinforce Talbot's forces, but this was to no avail. The shock of the French heavy cavalry charge was devastating, and the English army was shaken. Soon, the entire English army was in full flight. Fastolf managed to escape, and Lord Talbot was taken prisoner. The rest of the battle was essentially a mop-up operation, with the French cavalry riding down the fleeing English. The Battle of Pate was a stunning victory for France. The English army was virtually destroyed. The English initially deployed 5,000 men and lost over 2,000. The French, on the other hand, lost only about 100 men. In addition to the destruction of the English army, the capture of key English commanders during this campaign proved to be a fatal blow from which the English would never recover for the rest of the Hundred Years' War. Following this great victory, the French were able to regain large swaths of territory to the north, south, and east of Paris. Joan of Arc accompanied the Royal French Army on its march to Reims, where the Dauphin was crowned as King Charles VII of France on July 17, 1429. After the coronation, the French also tried to retake Paris but failed. On May 23rd, 1430, Joan of Arc was captured by the Burgundians at the Siege of Compagnie. The Burgundians then transferred her to the English, and she was put on trial in Rouen, where she was convicted for heresy and cross-dressing. On May 30th, 1431, she was executed by burning at the stake. The death of Joan of Arc was tragic indeed, but despite this, she had a profound impact on not only the Hundred Years' War, but the entire history of France and Europe. Although she did not participate in any fighting directly, she came along in what was perhaps France's darkest hour in history. And she gave the people of France hope to overcome what they saw as overwhelming odds. For centuries to come, Joan of Arc would be known as the quintessential heroine of France.